Elon Musk envisions SpaceX's Starship transporting astronauts and private passengers to the moon in the upcoming decade, with Mars potentially on the horizon a decade or two later. The rocket's second near-orbital test flight, more successful than its predecessor on April 20th, managed to survive stage separation, breached the edge of space, and self-destructed roughly 10 minutes post-liftoff. Expectedly, following the launch's deemed success, the Elon Musk-led private space enterprise aims to launch Starship as soon as next month. To adhere to this timeline, Starbase Texas operates without reprieve. Less than two hours after Ship 25 and Booster 9's liftoff, workers were at the launch site evaluating the pad's condition. The amount of debris generated by the test was notably less than after the IFT-1, simplifying the cleanup process. The launch site is still in favorable condition. Yesterday, the first of many extensive lengthy horizontal tanks for the tank farm upgrade was observed. This massive cryo hot dog tank was positioned upon arrival with space for an additional eight tanks. The tank farm is anticipated to undergo multiple upgrades in the coming period, potentially gearing up for the third Starship flight. Yet, despite substantial upgrades to Stage Zero and Starship hardware, the November 18th test was deemed a flight anomaly by the FAA. This has necessitated a further investigation by the FAA, which may extend over several months. SpaceX is also required to pass an FAA environmental review of the third Starship test and apply for modifications to its launch license to accommodate additional flights. Meanwhile, Blue Origin, Jeff Bezos's rocket company, is nearing the completion phases of its new Glenn Heavy Lift rocket's development cycle. Like the Falcon 9, the new Glenn is a reusable rocket whose first stage booster is designed for a propulsive vertical landing. However, unlike the Falcon 9, the rocket uses seven BE-4 rocket engines, which are more powerful than their Merlin counterparts. And according to Blue Origin, the rocket is designed to fly at least 25 times before it is retired. Currently, Blue Origin's sole active rocket is the New Shepard suborbital rocket. Similar to New Glenn, this rocket is engineered for vertical landings and has completed 21 missions to date. While New Shepard is Blue Origin's most successful rocket, New Glenn is the one that is central to the firm's commercial success. It is designed to carry as much as 45 metric tons to low Earth orbit, or LEO, which is nearly twice the capacity of the Falcon 9. Like SpaceX, Blue Origin will also use New Glenn to build out a satellite internet constellation and other missions, including a lunar lander for NASA's Artemis program. At the heart of the New Glenn, stationed at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida, its center stage stood without its engines, captured by local media. Blue Origin both engineers and supplies its engines, setting it apart in the space industry landscape. The New Glenn's flight profile shares similarities with SpaceX's Falcon 9. After stage separations, it executes a flip maneuver akin to the Falcon, followed by a vertical landing post a deceleration burn. However, the new Glenn seeks to attempt a landing on its maiden voyage, diverging from SpaceX's iterative approach of multiple flights before attempting landings. Both companies boast billionaire backers, providing substantial financial support for their ventures. SpaceX adopts an internal manufacturing strategy, producing components in-house to streamline costs and hasten production, while Blue Origin's developmental process remains relatively undisclosed. If the new Glenn proves successful and becomes operational, it poses a potential challenge to SpaceX's Falcon 9, offering a larger rocket capable of cost savings by reusing first stage boosters. Despite this, SpaceX's Starship aims for greater capacities, targeting over 100 tons to low Earth orbit, more than doubling the new Glenn's proposed payload. Certainly, 2024 anticipates being an exceptionally dynamic year for the space industry. Inspired by SpaceX, China is also progressing with a program to develop full-flow staged combustion cycle methane engines to power its reusable Long March 9 Super Heavy Lift Launcher. Work to develop full-flow staged combustion cycle methane liquid oxygen rocket engines producing 200 tons of thrust includes progress on overall design and components. Testing includes firing prototype and scaled components such as igniters, gas generators, 
Readers and Thrust Chambers. Authors belonging to the Xi and Aerospace Propulsion Institutes outlined the progress made by China on these and other methane liquid oxygen engines in a recent article. The Institute is the major liquid propulsion rocket engine design unit under CASC. Clusters of 26 of the reusable engines will power the first stage of China's Long March 9 Super Heavy Lift Launcher, according to designs presented earlier by officials from the China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation, China's main space contractor. CASC is understood to be targeting 2033 for a first test flight on the massive rocket. The paper notes research began in China in the 1980s in that 10-ton and 80-ton thrust methalox engines have now been developed. The latter have undergone successful hot-fire tests and mark advancements in engine reliability and reusability. The development of the full-flow staged combustion cycle methalox engines will support China's plans for future large-scale deep space exploration, including a Mars landing and other objectives. The paper states that core indicators make the engine comparable to the SpaceX Raptor engine that powers the Super Heavy slash Starship launch system. As the world's second full-flow staged combustion cycle methalox engine, it is superior to Blue Origin's BE-4 and other domestic and international methane engines, the paper claims. However, the authors note challenges ahead. Full-flow staged combustion cycle engines can provide high thrust and high efficiency, as well as benefits in terms of reliability and reusability. But challenges include complex system configuration, difficulties in integrated layout and final assembly, and controlling the ignition process. They also state the country's foundations for fully developing these engines remains relatively weak. Efforts in related technologies, they say, need to be strengthened to complete the complex and technically difficult project. The goal of low-cost, highly reliable, and rapidly reusable engines is however seen as key to national objectives. It would become an iconic technology and a leapfrog advance for China's space sector, according to the article. The paper also highlights progress on methalox engines made by Chinese commercial entities. Noted are the Mingfang-1 engine developed by CASIC or CASIC, Land Space's Tianchui engines, which power the Zhuchui-2, and the variable thrust JD-1 or Focus-1 engine for iSpace's reusable hyperbola rocket series. Long Yun engines developed by engine maker Jiu Shou, Yunjian, and aerospace propulsion's Kang Long engines are also listed. Landspace, one of the earliest firms to emerge after China, opened up the space sector to private capital, operates Zhu Chui 2, the first and so far only Methalox rocket to reach orbit. The startup is now also planning a stainless steel Methalox rocket. Named Zhu Chui 3, it will be capable of sending 20 tons to low Earth orbit when expendable, or 16 and a half tons reusable. Meanwhile, another early mover, iSpace, recently performed a hop test with a test stage for its Methalox Hyperbola rockets. It plans to follow up with a kilometer level test in the near future. The breakthroughs in methane engines within China, as well as the progress in the United States and SpaceX's demonstration of reusability, have led to a change in long-term direction of China's space transportation plans. Initially envisioned in 2011, the Long March 9 Super Heavy Lift rocket was set to employ 500-ton thrust kerosene liquid oxygen engines, currently undergoing advanced testing. These engines form the core of an expendable launch system per the original plans. Recent designs unveiled in 2022 and 2023 showcase alternate iterations of the Long March 9. Some designs portray the rocket utilizing Methalox engines without boosters. A more distant variant bears semblance to the super heavy Starship configuration. Hmm. Anyways, that's all folks. Thank you so much for tuning in, and if you want to support our channel even further, you can hop on over to our Patreon through the link in the description below. Sign up today and become a patron to gain access to exclusive content. Sounds exciting, right? In any case, we still appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.